Hey VC, it's Danny. Um, here to do my top five of 2017, my top five pickups. This is a video that I um, I got the idea from Brendan over at my friend Morrissey. He did a really great video where he just showed uh, basically the five best things that he'd found in the wild for the year of 2017. And uh, before we get too far into 2018, I just wanted to to throw my my list in there. Um, so. Yeah, this is my top five. Uh, none of these were ordered online. Um, I did have to use Discogs to confirm when I'd pick stuff up here and there, uh, but that makes absolutely no difference to you. Uh, so here we go. Number five. Um, number five, 10 Years in Memphis on Belzona Records. Um, this is a, uh, a pre-war blues comp centered around Memphis, obviously. Um, this is one of the original Yazoo comps. Um, when Nick Pearl started Yazoo, it was originally called Belzona Records. Um, and they released their first five records this way. And then they, um, they changed the name to Yazoo and went on. And Yazoo Records are hard enough to find as it is. This is the kind of thing I, I truly never thought I would ever own. Uh, I mean, I think, and I could say that about pretty much everything in this pile. Um, it's, it, you know, I, I have to be honest, with all of these, the rarity of them is part of what makes them so treasured to me. But also with all of them, the music that's on them is, is con, you know, contributing to their rarity. Um, this is a fantastic comp. It's in beautiful condition. Um... You want to see that, that Belzona label there? It's not focusing, but, um, but yeah, 10 years in Memphis, um, Gus Cannon, uh, Furry Lewis, Frank Stokes, um, it's just, it's just a, a fantastic comp, um, everything that, that I love about pre-war blues, um, but the music of the 20s and the 30s is is represented here. Um, not this one, but when I was picking up another Yazoo comp, yeah, Yazoo comp at um, my local record store, the guy behind the counter said, you know, I don't think there's a single bad song on these things. And then he went on to say, I don't think there, there was a single bad song recorded in the 20s and 30s. And uh, we had a brief conversation about how, you know, they, they just... They seem to leave it all out there. Um, you know, if you've traveled 100 miles and you have a chance to cut two sides and that's it, um, you're going to be present for that performance. Um, not to mention that, you know, obviously, no, there's no overdubbing. There's This is just people in a room performing their music. Um, and so the power of that is, is, is still easily felt today, uh, in my opinion. So... 10 Years in Memphis is my number five pick for the year. Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled beyond belief still to have that. Uh, and next up, we have Alice Coltrane, Journey into Sasha Dananda, uh, featuring Pharaoh Sanders. This is an original on Impulse, I believe. Pretty sure this was the... Uh, current impulse label when this this record was released um yeah so the big three for me in my jazz journey have been miles davis obviously but and john coltrane and then alice coltrane um when i first heard her music it, it just it opened a door um to to this whole new world that I didn't, I guess I just didn't really realize existed with jazz. I was, I was pretty ignorant about a lot of jazz until fairly recently in my life. Um, so it's only over the last three or four years that I've gotten to know Alice Coltrane's music, but I've really fallen in love with it. I've been lucky to find some of her other albums. Um, this one has eluded me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, especially at this earlier stage in her career, 
as far as I'm concerned, it was like she could do no wrong. Um, you know, really continuing the spiritual, um, a spiritual journey that 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 Coltrane had started uh, with the music. Um, you know, this is the kind of music that, for me, even if, as a non-spiritual or non-religious person, uh, you can still be moved by the power of this music. Um, something about the ambition of communing with the spirits, I guess. You know, I mean, just... Anytime human beings take on such lofty goals and, and really put all of their efforts behind it, um, I think is when the most incredible things happen. Um, and this is one of those things for me. Uh, it's just, it's an incredible album. Um, it's, it's a really moving listening experience. Um, as a piece, I'm, I'm thrilled to have it, you know. I mean, I think the the record's probably a, a near mint, and the the covers maybe a VG plus. You, know, you can see a little bit of wear here and there, um, but regardless, it's it's the music on here that makes this such a special pickup. Um, Alice Coltrane featuring Pharaoh Sanders, Journey into Sacha Dananda. That's my uh, my number four for the year. That was another. I I think you know I thought I would be stuck with a reissue for life and uh was thrilled to grab that um next up certainly fits um so working with the miles davis quintet this is this is not an original this is a an 87 repress uh through fantasy actually but um so this is, uh, you know, the Miles Davis Quintet, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Red Garland, Paul Chambers, Philly Joe Jones. Um, it's got a repro prestige label, yellow fireworks label. Um, so when I first started listening to jazz, it, it was Someday My Prince Will Come. That was the record that, um, that really hooked me. And was kind of the only jazz record I listened to for years and years. Um, and that's still, is kind of, it's a pocket for me, um, I guess. It, it, when I listen to this quintet, or, or this lineup, uh, you know, um, Coltrane era, Miles Davis, is... I know, it's pretty straight ahead, I know, but it's, it's just beautiful music. And this album has been one of the first times since uh someday my prince will come that i felt I, w I you know i was recapturing whatever i'd found in in, in that other album um uh i also I was able to pick up a copy of cooking this year which is also fantastic um um so working with the miles davis quintet just a beautiful representative version of i, I don't know if this is bop i whatever this is i love it um it's it's a really nice reissue. I'm thrilled to have it. I, I don't think I'll ever come across an original, and if I do, I probably won't be able to afford it. Um, but this sounds beautiful. Uh, I I want to I, I take it out to play it a lot. It's just um, it's, I don't know. There's just a warmth and, and a and a joy in this music, um, and an ease of access. I think you know. Uh, I think. I spent a lot of the time that I've been exploring jazz, I've been trying to expand my boundaries. And this is jazz that just works for me. It just fits. Um, so yeah, uh, thrilled to have this and uh, gets played all the time. So this would make it makes it my, uh, my number three pickup for the year, working with the Miles Davis Quintet. Number four, um, this is another one that I have I've shown, um, and my joy at having found this album only grows. Uh, this is the Stooges Funhouse. Uh, this is a huge. This could have easily been my number one pick for the year. It's an original on Electra, um, which I got for a steal. Um, yeah, big beautiful gatefold. And uh 
I don't know. I just I weirdly I had listened to the Stooges around this album. You know, I had I had a um, like I think an '80s repress of the first Stooges album, uh, which is you know great album. Raw Power, another great album. Um, and for some reason, I just spent a long time not knowing that I was even missing out. And then watching Andrew's videos, uh, it became clear that there was this kind of big hole in my knowledge of the Stooges. And when I found a copy and I got it home and I spun it, um, I, I was really just floored. And uh, I continue to be, um, you know, the way that this album just, I don't know, this, this album is like a great jazz record in, in some ways, you know, it just takes off and takes you along for the ride and brings you to places that you weren't expecting to go. And it can be hard and, and angular and difficult to wrap your head around, but at the same time, in many ways, it's very simple and accessible. Um, I don't I, I, It's the perfect package. It, it, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. It, it just presents itself in, 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 in a way that makes it so easy to digest. I think a lot of ideas that should be more difficult to digest. Uh, um, I don't know. This album should be more alienating than it is, uh, but it's not. It's exciting and vibrant. And I think one of my favorite things about this record is that when I put it on, each time it's as exciting as that first time I heard it. And it brings me back to the time that it was recorded, you know, in my head in an imaginary way. And I can't stop thinking about what it must have been like to, to bring this home, you know, on release day or the, the, the first week or month that it came out and, and, you know, spin this, like, what if you were still living with your parents? Like, what would they have thought? And it's just, it's an exciting record. Um, and I think it's, you know, whatever fire this had when it came out is still burning bright. Um, so this is, uh, number two could have easily been number one. The Stooges Funhouse, original on Electra, uh, easily one of my best grabs of the year. And, uh, all right, one more here. And one that I don't believe that I've shown. And apologies for the uh, terrible Blake sleeve sound. This is my number one record pickup of the year. This is Karen Dalton in my own time. And uh, it's an original pressing on Just Sunshine Records. Uh... Pretty early in 2017, I went into my local, and this was on the wall for more or less the price of the of a new reissue, a little bit more, uh, but it's an original. Um, I mean, I know I've said it before about the other things in this video. I truly never, never, never thought that I would even see one of these in person, um, let alone own one. Um, one of the few times where... I've seen an original of a record that I already owned the reissue and had to, I mean, just put no thought into the fact that I'd be buying the original anyway. Um, something on your mind, her cover of When a Man Loves a Woman, Katie Cruel, How Sweet It Is, um, the version of Same Old Man on here. It's, it's a gorgeous album. And I think the... The generally accepted idea behind this one is that it's overproduced. Um, and especially I've been listening to some of her the demos from 66, 63 lately. And, um, you know, those have a magic that, that her studio albums don't. And I, I, I can only imagine that if you were lucky enough to get to see Karen Dalton in the village, in her prime, that to hear an album like this must have felt... Like they were trying to polish up this raw gem um, in ways that were neither necessary nor appropriate. But coming at it removed from all of that and just 
kind of picking that record up the first time that I did and listening to it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a gorgeous record. Uh, it's just, it's beautiful. And, you know, I think it tends to be spoken about, um, here's a shot of the label there. It tends to be spoken about in this way where, like I, like I just said, you know, it's overproduced. It missed the point of what, what Karen Dalton was all about. It didn't capture her essence. Um, but I really tend to think of it as her essence elevated all of that production, you know? Um, I haven't heard anything from Karen Dalton that wasn't incredible. She was the incredible thing. Um, you know, when... I, I don't think it matters. I think you could have sat her on a bucket on a street corner and let, just let her sing with just her voice and it would have been beautiful. Um, so, yeah, this is an album that musically that I've been, I've treasured for, for quite a few years now. And now, of course, I literally treasure this physical copy. Um, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm running out of words. I can't say enough about how much I love Karen Dalton. Um, just such a gorgeous voice, such an incredible songwriter and incredible interpreter. Um, and, and yeah, I, you know, they keep talking about it, but I, I love the production on this album. It's big. It's, it's, it, you know, it's outsized and it matches her talent. Her talent far outstrips the production on here, but there's lots of great choices, you know, lots of kind of cinematic, uh, orchestration here and arrangements. Um, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful record. If you, if you aren't familiar with this album, uh, Go track down the light in the attic reissue. It's beautifully done. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with Karen Dalton, just just spend some time with her. Uh, she's one of my very favorite artists. I I still every time I remember that I found this, I have to go kind of pull it off the shelves and pinch myself a little bit. Um, it's just you know it is my number one absolute best find of the year probably will be my best find of the next five years. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Karen Dalton, In My Own Time. An original on Just Sunshine Records. So. I want to do some editing here to cut the cut the dog barking out. Uh, hopefully you won't know what I'm talking about because I will have already edited it out. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Brendan... Uh, my friend Morrissey, great idea for, for a video, and uh, here's mine, and hoping to see maybe your guys, as I know we're getting well into 2018, but um, I'd be curious to see, to see your, uh, you know, what you, what you thought were the best pickups of your year, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.